Terra Infinita, extraterrestrial worlds and their civilizations. The stories told by the woman who was born in the lands behind the ice walls. By Nos Confundenden. The blurb. The story told by the woman who comes from the lands behind the ice walls in the Ancestral Republic, daughter of the navigator William Morris who will provide information that was hidden from us for a long time about the worlds that are crossing the poles and the secrets of extraterrestrial civilizations. We will also be able to discover the history before the last reset and the continuation of what happened to her father when he returned to our lands. This can change everything. Chapter 1 Helen, the woman who was born in the lands behind the ice walls. 9.15 a.m. marked the clock in the suffocating and sad gray room. My eyes barely opened, and they somehow tried to give me an overview of where I really was. I must admit that every day I find it more difficult to adapt to this world. My mind takes minutes to realize that I am back in the walled lands, where my ancestors have walked long ago. I found a rolled-up newspaper on the door that said June 22nd. That's how they counted days here, each one faithful to their pigeonholed grid, where it seems that nothing can get out of the script, that mundane script that they created for the forced partners of this abyss. Dark and sinister, a humanity that seems to bleed day by day without realizing that it collides every day against the crude reality that they let long ago all this become something immovable. This cannot be called life, I thought to myself every time I visit the lands where my father was born, my grandparents, my ancestors, those who left their lives to see a free humanity, and I have found this. It hurts my heart to imagine the bones of my brothers who must still be buried here in these lands, who died believing and fighting for everything to be different. Curious way of living, I thought, while turning on and off a small lamp next to an old bed. Here, without a doubt, there is a strange way of creating a false need for objects. This humanity seems to be paying for the sin of its past, having tried to be free. I understand that, although it is very unfair, and it is a thorn in the side of all of us who come from the other side, the free side behind the ice walls. Pay for a place where they were born. This phrase went around and round in my head. That's why I knew well the faces of those adventurers who managed to find the other lands. The lands of the giants, or the lands where I was born so many miles away from here. But a very high price had to be paid. That's why I come back. That's why my father died leaving his legacy. We never forget the new humanity that was born in these lands, deprived of their freedom and their true history. Maybe it's time to start opening those walls of fear, as I like to call them, that terrifying us for a past where a war was lost, but freedom was gained, that the dead have not been in vain or forgotten as the custodians wanted. They buried a large part of human history and manipulated it. And worst of all is that they convinced them, and now many defend this history and the lands they inhibit. This world is a very difficult place to survive. In addition to a high toxicity in what you breathe, eat, drink, there are also enough dangers to make it an unfriendly place. And for those who manage to escape with little desire to return, but as I always say, in my heart, I have these lands so rooted. When I walk through these lands, I reconnect with my past, with my dear father, William Morris, who swore to defend and rescue this new humanity from the parasitic hands of the custodians. Also, the amount of wars that were lived throughout the years and are still being lived is really detestable how they manipulate even in such a basic way as putting different colors in imaginary limits. 
or believe of all kinds to divide. With that, you can only generate that millions of people lose their lives, even many voluntarily, thinking they do it in a just cause. The only just cause is freedom, and that freedom can only be achieved by tearing down the curtains around these lands. Lifting the veil comes at a high price, but it's always worth knowing the truth, even if this is the last thing I can write. How many innocent people have given their lives for this cause? What does not want to know the true? Who does not want to know the true story of our past? In this book, I will try to bring clarity as much as possible on the subject of the known lands and the other worlds behind the ice walls. I will try to leave detail of everything we know about the civilizations of each of these also called planets, and a brief history of which we got to know. Thanks to the book of the Shiki, the giant human who gave my father the knowledge that nobody knows in this new humanity, due to the great exiting manipulation and the strong conditioning that they exploit from childhood. The important thing is that only one person I have met who is really interested in listening to my story even though I had not revealed my name, my real name, or where I had come from, we had been studying this new humanity for a long time. We would not trust this long investigation and information if we did not know that it would be delivered with all the respects and the way we want. Besides, it takes urgency. We are not here to scare anyone, nor give dates of cataclysms or resets or restarts. But we are aware and understand that the situation of recent years is increasingly delicate. We understand that the process can be accelerated, and we are aware of the causes of the resulting effects. In case I did not introduce myself yet, my name is Helen Morris, daughter of the Navigator, William, and born in the lands that surely you do not know, almost 8,000 kilometers behind the ice wall in the direction you know as South. Before I take you on the path of the Terra Infinita and its history, you must understand that much of these texts will not go in line with what you have learned in the circled environment. I will also explain where the terms come from. Much of the history told here is possible for you to keep to yourself and that this book can open up this cause. Much of the story still lives in you, because you were also part of it in some way. Only that you have been put to sleep, completely anesthetic, anesthetized, to such an extent that living in this life seems normal. A life that one seems to base merely on robotic, repetitive actions, very few based on love and empathy. The division is every day easier and for any reason and the big media takes advantage of any of these weaknesses that have been exploiting for a long time. It is also important that you contrast this information. You should not believe anything about us, but you should question everything. What you have learned so far and what they will want to make you learn by force. Always try to surround yourself with people who not only deliver a message of empathy and love, but who really carry it forward and do not generate any division. So do not be surprised if any of this sounds familiar. Embrace the ideas that you would like the most. Embrace them tightly. And always trust what you feel. What comes from your heart, your mind, will try to manipulate and confuse you. My father left these lands in a time of war. And when I returned, I found it almost in the same situation. As you will see, the security that one seeks in the time of war is the same that generates them. In other words, there is so much security from any country or government or political party or any leader of any kind. It is only you humans against those who pull the strings from the dark called custodians, the watchers, caretakers. The Corrupt Brotherhood, the Tree Protectors, Kuehas, the Energy Absorbers, 
and I think I've heard many other terms, but we will stick with the first of them. Although I usually call them the parasitic race, it fits them perfectly. They are here since almost the beginning of humanity, and whether we like it or not, they manage to have control of these lands today. Can take anything can anything be done against this? The answer is, is simple. Yes. But for that we have to go into many points and find many of their weaknesses as well as their strengths. Knowing the enemy is the best way to break free of their control and or end up defeating them. Chapter 2. The Great Dome Before going into each of the worlds, it is necessary to make a caveat and clarity what the Great Dome means and what we mean when we mention it. The Great Dome, or also called the End of the Known, is which covers and encloses in some way all of the other known worlds. Very few were able to see this end and even touch it. Can it really be touched? Moreover, it is said that some experience were made to be able to cross it, but it was not possible. It is the terror of several colonizing civilizations that do not sleep peacefully. Since any race from outside could take away from them, from one day to the other, the powers that they have, the powers that they maintain in the hierarchical pyramid that they themselves build during history. Another world that generates terror for them is the celestial lands. But we will have time to detail this mystery place that has a great relationship with the human being. In this great dome, there are 178 worlds, or circle environments, which in turn may have one or several domes that also enclose them with their different climates and civilizations. Penetrating these domes of, circle, of each circle is not an easy task. As time went by, the technique was perfected, and now there is a lot of technology to carry it out. But this was developed exclusive, exclusively by colonizing races. Many other races explored surrounding these worlds, or simply the independent lands lacking domes. These domes are almost impossible to cross via air, and almost always another way is sought by land. But the most common is that it can be done through water, which is where they are more easily found, the way to open the passages that can connect their inner outer worlds. Almost like two membranes in any cell, functioning as a barrier that can allow, a, allow at a certain time the passage. When you have great control to be able to penetrate some specific domes, it can be done via air without much inconvenience, although it can be quite dangerous for reasons that we will see later. Much later, many portals were found in several circle environments, connecting even several of the worlds. The manipulation of these portals was so great that many problems were caused, and some became unstable, making some beings have disappeared without knowing where they really went, or if this caused their matter to disintegrate. Today it is of this call oh, today it is the common to find beings in full development of portals that can connect certain areas within the Great Dome without ever having to be it, been able to penetrate it. When we speak of 178 worlds, we are not referring to the independent lands that exist between worlds. These are lands that exist and were used by various races when they could go outside. In fact, it is said that these lands existed to avoid long distances that connect the worlds. It is fervently believed that the worlds were made to investigate them and all of us in one way or another. Are we going to go outside to look for our freedom? To know other races? To be able to enter someday in what can be found in the celestial lands as well as behind the Great Dome? Chapter 3 The Lands of the Custodians this parasitic race was briefly indicated in the first chapter, are beings that base their technology on attack and defense, weapons, 
and using all their potential in the discovery, colonization, and explorization of other lands, as well as the beings they can find. Their beginning is unclear and full of questions. There are theories among the giants where it is said that the custodial race was attacked by some other race that did not even come from this great dome and that they merged with the locals to create a great force that later gave origins to the custodians. This would explain the reason for their great development over other races that were still in their infancy trying to survive within these circles, within their circles. The custodians, it is said, were the first to leave their world and advance on their way to the others. With great destructive and colonizing power, having reached each of the worlds and tried to explore around the known end of the worlds. While they have been defeated on at least two known occasions by two completely different races, it is certain that they are also vengeful and that if they have not yet tried again, they soon will. The custodians as the only race were the ones who attempted to enter the celestial lands. That very little is known. These lands are the most mysterious of all known worlds, and while all or most of all races existing today are aware of this place, very few dare to want to penetrate it. The story goes that humanity, in a way, comes from these lands, and that each of the humans have the source, or life energy, also called soul that come from these lands. Therefore the human destiny is to confront the custodians that whatever is done the great clash will be inevitable. Although it has already been tried and the great forces between humans and custodians have collided with the help of the Anakam giants and others, history will surely repeat itself again in these lands. For that reason, we are very aware of everything that happens here. Any opportunity to free humanity will be used to the fullest. Also, we cannot make the mistakes of the past. Otherwise, it is possible that we now we may never have another opportunity. For each reset, the security becomes stronger and the human standard of living, living becomes less and less free. The humanity that is living now is nothing like that of my ancestors in these same lands, nor that of my ancestors to the previous one. Each reset is worse, stricter, with less freedom and greater manipulation. We escaped these lands during the Great War against them. The giants helped us to form a large block and confront them before everything got out of control. Unfortunately, when the hard defeat came, we knew that everything was going to get worse for those born here. Besides, they know that many escaped and that we would be in danger, or that we would be a danger to all the manipulation and lies in these lands that they spread and control. It would be difficult to generate another new great Tartary with all the free technology in the great cities that were able to be forged. The truth is that we had the hope that victory and freedom would finally be ours, but by those things of destiny, we did not achieve it. We know that it was very close, but it is also true that defeat would bring more misery to a new humanity. The risk was very high. The babies who are less than seven months old are left at the disposal of the custodians in these lands, who with their technology take them little by little to a new beginning. This beginning is sudden and in various parts of the known continents, so there will, al there will always be part that will not have parents, grandparents, so it will be until forgotten. Once the number they set is reached, they will begin to manipulate the human to take them on the path they have decided. The vestiges of the past life will be intermingled as their own. Even if the human of that time cannot reproduce, 
it nor have the necessary tools. Nothing will be questioned as long as everything can be demonstrated by the great leaders or media, scientists, historians, scholars, celebrities, and all kinds of fictitious prestige that they will invent depending on what stage of development that race is in. The technology will be delivered in small installments until it can reach the levels that is also previously established by the leaders. The Consodians are, an arrogant, are arrogant beings who detest the human being. For them, the human being is a horrible being who smells bad and does not deserve any freedom. The custodial leaders are really hostile and always were hostile to our race. This is why they control it, but they also do not allow anything to get out of the pre-established control. They would even carry out a reset before knowing that at least a single human could escape. The leaders many times met with the intention of eliminating the human race, but there was much debate about it, especially for the tasks that were carried out there, carried out here. That would bring much discussion among the same custodians. Plus, there is a small part that has a great relationship with the leaders. Many are part of lodges, military, or politicians who came to have direct contact with them and were rewarded with their passage to other lands. For example, the existing colony in the Land of Mars, the story of the last reset where my grandparents were able to escape with my mother, who at the time was a baby. Due to the great war that took place in these lands more than 250 years ago, put on alert this race who thought they dominated these lands with ease until the union of giants and humans really shook their power. In the war it is said that one of their most important leaders died at the hands of the giant humans and this also caused that the new human beings in these lands with babies of a few months was carried out under a strict control and manipulation. It is what we are seeing in the current days, and what we will continue to see in the near future if things do not change. The custodians are carnivorous for the most part, although they can really eat all kinds of food. Do they eat human flesh? I will come back to that question later, as I think it's worth talking about. They know agriculture very well, being pioneers and experts in that field, something they inculcate and educate the humans after each reset to carry out these tasks of agriculture and animal husbandry so that they can then increase their population as fast as possible. They receive pleasure from human fear or sadness and all that negative energy can be absorbed by them that they really end up enjoying it. That is why it is common to see great sacrifices in ancient civilizations or great tragedies, the thirst for human blood. They enjoy these sacrifices, and in many stories we can find that they feed on this. They reached a great development in the modification of the climate, and it is common that they create great walls of ice around the colonized lands. This they begin to use in our last time since before they had not reached this development. The walls serve as the great shield to be able to protect or enclose even more of the colonized races. In this way it is very difficult for them to escape, even when they have to leave some worlds by necessity to go in search of another. Chapter 4 The Anunnaki's Land the famous Anunnaki, another of the colonizing and parasitic races that is sickening the other worlds, manipulating and controlling the children of children for years and years. Another of our enemies, a hostile and power-hungry race. They are the creator of the pyramids, and they build structures in all the worlds they visit. They are, in our opinion, the strongest race within the Great Dome even above the custodians. The technology they use to attack other worlds is incredible, incredibly advanced. The weapons of destruction and the faculty they have 
to enter through the domes is also something notorious and that characterizes them and frightens any race. The utilization of portals for transportation led this race to be one step ahead of the others. In fact, it is known the story that they have defeated the custodians when between them there was a great conflict during the opportunity that we had in the known lands to be able to free ourselves. And they were also the ones who caused us to be defeated in the last known pact between the custodians and the Anunnaki. This race is confused in several of the stories that are told in the known lands in a casual and often deliberate way, but we find in several stories and books of the known lands the Anunnaki as reptilioid or reptilian beings. But the reality is that they are beings of very tall stature, can reach five meters tall. They live in an arid zone with little vegetation and although the waters of Horus seem to be paradisic, paradisical beaches from far away, the rea reality is that they are deep waters and in them live snake-like animals that can measure up to 55 meters long and what that do not like the visit of other beings from the outside. Their skin color is yellow-greenish, although their leaders can have a totally different tonality but all of them have very dry scaly skin and their eyes are distinguished distinguished by being yellow red or black and they have a particular iris that other beings also share that is characterized by a cleft <coughs> depression or gap that can both be uni and bilateral generally dark in color. During the many civilizations in the known lands, both the Anunnaki and the Custodians, usually the former, have been depicted in many forms with humanoid bodies and with different heads of animals, reptiles, birds, and a myriad of them. Thus confusing the true history of the human being and conditioning the human mind throughout his life by these parasitic beings. They are also beings that lack all empathy and are all based solely on the oppression of other beings and the conquest. Their thirst for power and control. In this, they are very similar to the custodians and that is why they have preferred to share this position than to kill each other. Although t tension is always expected between these two races, which could be convenient for all the other worlds that are under their power. Chapter 5. The Lands of Venus The original beings of these lands, also called Venusians, and unlike those of Mars, they survived all colonization. But how? It is still not known for sure how these beings were able to make fun of the brutal colonization they suffered long before the custodians took the known lands. According to some legend, within the giant race, the first humans thought to have contact with the original Venetians in order to form a block against the colonizers and thus learn from each other. This happened in the beginning just before the great just before the custodians took the first humans by surprise and they ended up being colonized in the walled lands. There are theories that some of the early humans who started in the lands of Asgard, Lemuria, and Atlantis in conjunction with a portal connected to Hyperborea may have escaped before the first custodial attack and possibly settled in the lands of Venus. The Venetians are beings who base their technology purely and exclusively for spiritual development and benefit on their path of ascending and transcending internally. They did not possess weapons of destruction for attack and defense. This the Kasodians saw an easy accessible, easily accessible. Once they penetrated their world environments, they thought that everything would be simple in those lands. 
The surprise came when the custodian set foot on the lands of Venus and a great storm hit the circle environment very suddenly. They did not take note of it at the time as they thought it was the weather there. But as days passed, they saw that the storm never receded and they could not find a single Venusian on the surface. The storms never ceased until the last custodian did not cross the dome to the outside. With custodial technology, they began to notice that the Venusians were underground. In bunkers of a technology heareth to unknown to them, and the storm raging up there on the surface was truly devastating. The trustees gathered to come to a decision soon. They were not going to stay there much longer. In fact, many trustees started to revolt and didn't see the point in dying up there. Things got pretty complicated for the leaders. Many saw it as a failure, and others thought of returning at another time. But true to their history, they did not give in and many custodians did, died on Venus. Even a very important leader, it is said, fallen in these distant lands. The conquest of Venus for the custodians was a failure. In fact, they did not fight against the Venusians who did not possess weapons. If they had them, I think it would have been a crushing defeat for them. When the story was known in other circle environments, they tried to imitate it, but with disastrous results. Later we'll comment on that point. The technology that the Venusians had been developing was not overnight. It was years and years of progress and those bunkers had everything. High, high level subway connections. The custodians tried to block and even destroy the area with explosives and missiles. But for each attempt, many custodians died because the areas near the bunkers were full of explosives and other technologies that hindered even the approach. A custodial leader, already at the end of his failed invasion, met with a Venusian leader. As it was feared the custodians might try to blow up the entire surrounding circle in retaliation, no one really knows what was discussed or what happened that day, but the custodians left the lands of Venus in the worst way with heavy casualties and a defeat to their credit. We know because the Venusians themselves told us that in this meeting, besides pleading for peace in their lands, they would, ask, they would have asked for the liberation of humans, which was totally rejected. Chapter 6, Land of the Dracos, or Land of Draco. The Draco, or known as the Edomines, are the inhabitants of the Draco lands, northwest of the known lands, crossing the lands of Venus. These beings that once visited our lands are known for their great technology, advance in weapons for attack and defense, as well as, a, as, well as great psychic development. Some of the beings can communicate telepathically using this technique to subdue any colonizing enemy or even to colonize other lands. The Edomines, by means of treaty, achieved a union with the custodians. But in, at the beginning, this was not so. But the custodians attacked their lands when they were not in their most advanced stages, but on the contrary. The Draco lands lack islands, but two large continents are found with great vegetation. In fact, the most exotic plants of any other circle environment within the Great Dome exist there. Its great walls of ice was never an impediment to be able to cross other domes and conquer some lands. These walls were left by the custodians when they decided to put an end to the total manipulation of their environment. Did they stop manipulating them? We really wonder. We think not. They, they started by lands outside of the domes, like their nearby land Osiris. But then they moved their technology to the islands of Anubis, 
Many of these beings stayed in the Paradise Islands, but they used many of the military bases for weapons development. What happened in the ancient battle between Edomans and Custodians? The Custodians finally won at the beginning since the Edomines, as was mentioned, had not achieved progress that they have today. But it was not easy, nor did they surrender, since they know their lands well and are experts in making large tunnels. The Custodians had to use advanced technology to do a finally achieve victory in those lands and leave their mark on the walls of ice surrounding the dome in that circle environment. The Draco lands were also visited by other races such as the Anunnaki and other inhabitants of nearby lands such as the famous Greys that inhibit the Orion lands. The link with these beings led to the fact that today both races live together in a true fraternity, both in Draco and Orion. The Edomans and the Greys can be found together. The age at which these beings can reach is approximately 192 years, compared to the years of the known Earth, Earths. While the custodians infected their atmosphere and the air they breathe at the time of their attack, as of today they have no diseases nor any great war being waged. Although they are spiteful beings and it would not be strange if they are planning to colonize other lands or perhaps a revenge towards the custodians, but this is all mere speculation. A great flood that still disconcerts its inhibitants was generated at the beginning. A strange wall surrounds its coast. It is technology that they are carrying out. It is said that it is used as a radar, that it could attack an enemy that wanted to cross them. The surveillance systems of their inlands increased in the last time, product of fear that the great dome colonizers still have what could be outside this great dome. It is possible that the custodians in the Anunnaki are very interested in this type of wall to replace the ice walls they created or they create. Chapter 7 The Land of Mars. Land of Mars, who inhibits or inhibited these lands that lie behind the walls of ice and the mountain walls. There lies a great world crossing the second dome and transversing lands that human that few humans have ever seen. Mars has a great incidence in the known lands, since in those lands several events related to humanity happens and still happens today. The immense circle environment and misnamed Red Planet harbor a great and diverse life within its dome. The native Martian civilization was reportedly totally annihilated by the colonizers. So why wasn't part of it left for possible further development? Or even for some kind of manipulation by the colonizers themselves? Apparently this race was firm in their convictions based on their morals and ethics, preferring to die and extinguish their race in battle rather than beg for freedoms and quotas under conditions that colonization would impose. The Anunnaki at the end of their mission realized that not a single Martian was left standing since the last one even committed suicide. They were surprised since they did not expect this to happen. In fact, it was their first colonization and after this they took precautions. The original Martian race known in, latter st in later studies was an advanced race in its technology that prioritized the spiritual growth and welfare of their community. They had little military training and technology so their defense was almost nil. The custodians soon took the great lands and grouped in the great centers taking advantage of all the known of all the knowledge and progress that was left there. Nowadays the land of Mars are simply experimental lands where several races coexist and generate wars between them and different reasons for almost eternal conflicts. 
The leaders of these lands are both Anunnaki and custodians. There is a community of humans, mostly made up of people who belong to small groups and earn their passage only by their hard work and betraying their own race in their homelands. The best known member, who might even be living in the human colony of the last humans, I am referring to the last reset, would be well known explorer Rear Admiral General Richard Byrd who knew how to be on the other side for a long time and to confess some truths before giving himself up completely. Some of the many stories that we have out there and that are written today to keep the truth away from the terra infinita and that the civilizations that live behind the ice barriers and the domes that separate them. In the lands of Mars also coexist the famous greys and some minor draconian colony were also known as the Edomines. Between the Greys, the human colony, there is a rivalry, rival, rivalry <laughs> existing since almost the beginning of the transportation of the custodians to the human there. The custodians and the Anunnaki monitor everything very well and do not miss any detail of them. What had begun in the clone lands today takes place in these lands possibly the transfer is due to the time difference that exists in that environment their time as in many other circle environments or lands within different domes is different than the land of mars for this reason the passage to mars of humans is always welcome despite the dangers involved since it is a one-way ticket to a long life of almost 500 years in comparison there are also other races, almost all moved by the custodians in their frantic conquest of their 178 circle or worlds. And many other races originating from different sectors were also moved there. The lands of Mars are considered as enlarged zoo, where different behaviors, confrontations, and conflict resolutions are studied. A huge farm of Exhaustive Monitoring and Analysis of Races Chapter 8 The Lands of Neptune Neridia, Triton, and Poseidon The names of their lands that shine in the dark atmosphere that surrounds their circle environment The Neptunes have a hard time since their birth Not because they have not been able to adapt to their environment and survive in the climate where vegetation is not abundant but because the sandstorms and the aridness that enclose this world can be really devastating. For that reason, most of the big cities were created on the shores of their most fertile lands, leaving a large portion uninhibited. Anyway, the Neptunians managed quite well to carry out colossal creations. There are buildings so tall that they exceed twice the size of the known lands. Silence is still faithful companion that will go with you wherever you go in this dark land in this dark world as its sun is also very different from those of the vast majority and is totally opaque throughout the time and with the great technology technology technological development that they knew how to carry out nothing of the climate nor of the darkness was a great obstacle for them there are, also, there are also large cities with very high constructions, many pyramids since the Anunnaki's were the ones who entered this world and took over their environment after a long time. Recall the pyramids are key to the Anunnaki colonization that first starts with friendly and supposed technology exchanges between beings. The Anunnaki can be really great swindlers and lie to their leaders to generate a close bond then stick the cold dagger in the back. Overnight, the Neptunians were left with nothing, as the Anunnaki had planned everything from the beginning, and everything went as expected. And it is said that this is one of the first lands that they penetrated and ended up colonizing. The natives of these lands could not cope with any technology like that, although we can assure that it is still in full development. 
but by the time the Neptunians had opened a long spiritual and development path focused on real personal and spiritual improvement to cross the Great Dome after transcending, transcending matter. But it is not that they had left the defense to chance, but they had developed a great military power that did not end up serving against the colonizers, although they did get a big scare when they rebelled. In the beginning, the Neptunians accepted defeat, but as these beings were used for certain tasks within their own lands that obviously ended up directly benefiting the Anunnaki bosses, they rebelled against them generating several pockets of fierce fighting. Then the casualties on both sides began, and everything got out of control in the center of these lands. Triton became the epic center of absolute chaos. The blue blood of the natives was spilled in great quantity. The Anunnaki are still there today, their great enemies, and that after years they reached an agreement to withdraw from their lands. Today the Neptunians live in peace with a high development and technology that benefit their environment, their spiritual growth, and they are in peace with their neighboring lands and races. But according to the story, they prepare in silence for any new attack that could come from any nearby Anunnaki lands or other lands that could generate some danger for them. Do Neptunians travel to other lands? It is said that they have traveled to other lands to investigate how other races live, to generate certain links to be able to explore their environment. But it is said that they have not visited the known lands or spoken to any leaders at, this, at any time. Although they do know the land of Mars have been able to make contact with the human custodial colony, colony located there. As I commented in previous paragraphs, the Neptunians are a race of dark blue color. They feed on local fruits since based on their system they cannot ingest a great variety of foods. They do not eat meat and they have certain friendly relationships with the custodians although it is not known why, since they are generally beings that sought their freedom and independence. Chapter 9, The Lands of Uranus <laughs> The Uranians, or Uranites, are of pinkish skin. The tonality of their eyes are, very, are completely dark, although there are accept, uh, acceptations... Expect, Although there are exceptions of completely white that give the appearance of having visual difficulty, but the reality is that their sight is hyper-developed. Being able to see great distances and taking advantage of this as a great opportunity to be able to explore other lands. They have not achieved great technology development, nor are they advanced spiritual beings. They have long winters, and for this reason there are temperatures that become very low during almost the whole year, referring to the local year. 42 years as they know in the known lands can be approximately a year and a half difference compared to the first ones. They are long-lived long -lived beings, although they are still today under the custodian domain, and their climate was totally modified as well as their complete circle environment. Today their lifespans have been shortened because they began to suffer from strange diseases due to the alterations and manipulations of their bodies and laboratories. The custodians penetrated their world when the Uranites were at an early stage of development. At first the custodians had not been interested in them nor their minerals of their world. But then everything changed when they discovered large quantities of an important mineral under their lands. There are large excavations, craters, on their surface. Their lands look as if they were torn by titanic hands. The reality is that this would cause the custodial that this was caused by the custodial machinery in the process of excavation. The locals were under great pressure and almost enslaved by the parasitic, parasitic colonizers. The little development thereafter is strictly due to this reason. The custodians do not want, under any circumstance, that these beings get developed even moderately. 
The Uronites today are grouped only in the main lands, their core, called Titania. They are generally giant beings that can reach four to five meters in height. They have two very long arms and feed exclusively on vegetables that grow in the lands or around them. The other lands that surround the Great Wall of this enormous world are very similar climate to those of the lands of Neptune. Chapter 10, The Lands of Jupiter This is a huge circle environment. We find several lands of each of them as different of ways of life. The natives of these lands identify with their birth lands and are clearly divided amongst themselves. They are great beings of they <laughs> there being great wars in the past between different factions of the same race. They live in almost constant internal warfare. This is due to the influence of the Anunnaki when they invaded their lands in an early stage. The vast majority of those who rule today are in the center, their cord, called or known as the Land of Zeus. According to the history that could be gathered from the interesting world is that one of the high-ranking Anunnaki leaders lived or still lives in these lands along with the leaders of the Jupiter lands. Both the Zeus-born and the Europeans currently rule and have other parts of the population Tabi, Adrastea, Elaria, Amalethia, Ganymede, or Ganymede, Callisto, Irisa, and Pendia, in constant conflict with each other, using the division to be able to continue ruling and manipulating the reset of the civilization. Special mention for Metis. These lands are used only by the leaders, and not being, and no other being can enter without permission. They are beings with great development and destructive weapons for attack and defense, and have almost no spiritual development. They are based on the hierarchical pyramid instituted early by the Anunnaki. Pyramids are found almost everywhere in the lands of this world as a flag of clear control by the parasitic race. Contact with humans happened on the unknown Earth long ago. Exactly three resets or reboots ago, they show clear hostility to almost all other races, even had several conflicts with the Consodians. They studied the human being for a while, since they have large laboratories with great scientific advances for the modification and manipulation of beings. These beings are short statured in comparison, 1.4 to 1.5 meters, and are known for their particular eyes and their big heads. They are carnivorous and feed mostly on animals that are born on the surface of their lands. Chapter 11 Pegasus The lands of Pegasus near Jupiter and Hercules became a great headache for several races for a long time. The beings that were born and were identified by their wings, which they created based their technology on exploration. Not so much the weapons that they could use for attack or defense, much less to the colonizers other lands. This played against them when they faced the Consodians when they visited their circle environment. But surely their surprise was greater when they found that these beings moved through the skies without great difficulty because of their great metallic wings that beat back and forth, almost dancing throughout the firmament of, the be of this beautiful world. It required no great effort to take these lands and that the Atlanteans as they were called because of their great central lands, <clears throat> came to an agreement with the Consodians that ended up harming them extensively. They lost much of their mineral wealth of their lands as well as shared their technology advancements and thus furthered helped the Custodians to advance in their development to penetrate the celestial lands. The Lanteans realized too late 
the real plans of their colonizers, and several revolts were, gener were generated that ended in massacre of the winged ones. Some say that this race ceased to exist, and that there are other versions that have that there are other versions that have even seen them in other lands, but they are confused with the beings called angels, and of the lands of the same name. Since they are also close to the lands of Jupiter, and they also have large white wings. The Lantians usually wear their long white hair with great development in alchemy and scientific advancement. They are not usually hostile to other races, but brought their race to critical point of disappearance when fighting against the oppressors. Chapter 12, Aldebaran. In Aldebaran B live the Terranians or Terrenes. They have a great relation, relation to what you know from the past stories like the Minotaur. That monster with a bull's head and a human body, the Terrenes are a faithful reflection of that representation. And if we dig deeper, we can find a direct relationship between Torinos and human beings in the past relation in the past resets. Some stories of the giants confirm that Torinos fed on human flesh, but in recent times the Torines prov pro <laughs> proved to be benevolent beings who were able to end the custodial rule for a very long time. Since they are not well regarded by the races that dominate within this great dome since they have such have such, oh my goodness since they have saved several races and species that were about to become extinct even those races that had not been able to develop their to their full potential due to the attacks of the parasitic parasitic already mentioned their genetic their genetic material has been modified several times, but they have not been able to modify their empathy and love for life in other worlds. It should be noted that at the beginning of their development, this was not the case. For that reason, great wars were carried out within their territory. They are carnivorous beings only, and nowadays they can be found scattered in several other circle environments. They are also beings that were dedicated from the beginning to the spiritual development, although they have great knowledge in exploration ships and weapons. I have had direct contact with some Tyrrhenians, Tyr yeah, Tyrrhenians, and they have lived with the Anunnakum giants for a long time, have shared their technology and wisdom with us, and have helped us a lot to survive after the Great War. It is very common that both giants, Tyrrhenians, Titans, and several other beings are represented in the stories told in their lands as evil beings that feed on their pain, suffering, or even their flesh, although the latter in the remote past could be true. This is why representations of their imposing figures are often rejected in new humanity. They are beings that can measure up to 4.5 meters in height and are differentiated, differentiated from the reset by their large horns and often cut from small. Aldebaran A has animal and plant life, but the Tararians do not want to live in that area because of a violent past where much blood was shed. A great internal war between beings of the two lands led to a complete extinction of people living there. For that reason, and out of respect for the memory of all those who have lost their lives there, it was, dead, it was decided not to use them. Chapter 13. The Lands of Saturn The Satyrians... <clears throat> The Satyrians are being of very tall stature. Some reach up to 14 meters in height. Their psychic development, along with their imposing figures, makes them very strong beings.
For that reason, and for their great technological advancement, they were never conquered by the parasitic race. These lands are, even though they are gigantic and attract attention because of their big rings, were not visited until relatively recently. When the Anunnaki visited them for the first time, they came to a quick agreement because they saw these lands and the native beings as very hard and difficult to colonize. The Anunnaki were coming from hard times of many wars in several places, especially in the known lands, and they did not want, or rather could not, have another big war. They knew they did not have much chance against the Satyrians. For that reason, they preferred to have a friendly relationship with their leader. The funny thing is that when they tried to find leaders, they realized that they did not work that way there. The hierarchical pyramid of which they were so used to did not exist. There were no leaders or anyone representing their race. They simply all did it as a whole. Their great psychic power united to carry out decisions that would satisfy everyone and benefit the entire race. These titans were really united. The exploration ships they posed were extremely advanced for the time. And it is said that they taught the Anunnaki's a lot about the Great Dome as they were able to visit it on several occasions. They flatly refused to help them penetrate the celestial lands as they consider it sacred like so many other races. These beings are frugivores. They usually have a, bullish, a bluish color in almost their body with white tones in their abdomen. These titans visited the known lands on several occasions during different resets, carrying thousands of stories that are today intermingled with mythology and custodial manipulation. Some have been immortalized in their known lands. They can be found on large stones, mountains, or trees, as some suffered from custodial technology long ago. Along with the Anakam, these beings are feared by the custodians and the Anunnaki as they are considered as they consider them real dangers to their plans to conquer the celestial lands. Chapter 14 The Lands of Orion These lands are dominated by beings known as the Greys or Greys generally of small stature between 1.3 and 1.4 meters high. They are beings of great psychic and scientific development. Their laboratories are extremely advanced and undoubtedly the best that can be found within the Great Dome. They have been experimenting with many races. They have in their possession knowledge about all of them existing here and the custodians have used them on several occasions in their obsession to try to achieve penetration into the celestial lands. But as everything tried was a failure, many, type, many of these beings were busy analyzing the human being in depth, carrying out abductions and other genetic tests. They are beings that lack empathy and are generally hostile, hostile towards humans. Only on few occasions have they shown compassion. But cases of abductees who have had really bad experiences abound. They have been abducting and experimenting with human beings for a long time. In fact, in the time before the last reset and other resets as well, they were already experimenting with us. The curious thing was when they tried to do it, during the time of the great advanced Tartary, where free energy was controlled and a very superior technology for that time, the ships of the Greys were destroyed almost by thousand every day. We could call them brothers of the beings of the Zeta Reticuli, since their race intermingled and today they coexist together. In the time before the Great War, 
These beings were in control of the known lands for a short period of time. As the custodians and Anunnaki leaders had had major uprising problems in another circle environment, this was taken advantage of by the giants and the humans to carry out the largest uprising in history. The, grady, the greys were defeated without being able to do anything but go in search of the custodians. These beings were expelled from the known lands by the giants. This they would never forgive them, and although they were later meeting with giant leaders, it is well known that they detest them and the feeling is mutual. The greatest leader of the greys being of the beings ugh, I apologize. The greatest leader of the grey beings died in the known lands that generated the hatred that they had for her humanity was raised even more. The Greys colonized independent lands but never came to dominate any other circle environment on their own. The beings of Zeta Ricoli were colonized by the Anunnaki and used in, the great, in their great expeditions towards the exploration of other lands. On the other hand, the Greys of Orion followed a similar path but on the custodial side. With the great difference that Orion Greys really revealed themselves when the human uprising existed, the death of their great leader caused deep hatred towards the custodians for the task of taking care of other people's lands. Several battles existed between them, which further facilitated the power of the great Tartarians in the known lands. Although it was never managed to have them as allies since they hated humans. The truth is that there was an exchange of technology between gray leaders and humans, but they fell into the hands of the elite and were used against and for the destruction of the race itself. Gray beings can also be found in the Mars land, which is a large experimental land where both the custodians and the Anunnaki jointly control the human colony there clashed several times against the Greys, but were defeated in all those battles. They use cloning as a subsist as a race and are very and are very robotic in their functions. They are devoid of any kind of emotion or empathy. They came very close to being totally exterminated in the past. Chapter fifteen The Pleiades. The Ple Pleiadians are very close to the known lands. They are very tall beings that keep great physical similarity to, with the Norse. It is said that their ancestors survived the battle of Asgard against the custodians and then escaped to the lands in the Pleiades. They are generally benevolent to humans, but made pe a peace pact with the Anunnaki during the early age of their development. They rely on spiritual development and improving your living conditions. Their circle environment is believed, to have, is believed to have been manipulated by the Anunnaki since almost their beginnings. For that reason they suffer natural disasters. From time to time trying to improve their current situation, although their lands seem to be destroyed at an accelerated rate. It is believed that this was implanted to force them to have to escape from there and seek refuge in the known lands. Although many of these beings visited the known continents, especially the northern entrance through Asgard, they do not feel comfortable coexisting with humans. They look for other alternatives, but they were a failure. They also failed to live in any of the lands behind the walled mountains. These beings did not help the humans in the Great War, although neither did they help the custodians. They simply, st they simply stayed on the sidelines, although there is a good relationship with the giants. They are not seen with good eyes as allies, since they showed no interest in humanity in delicate moments of history. Anyway, their great spiritual advancements is worthy of learning. They are beings that could help humans on their way. And lately, there are more Palladians entering the known lands. 
It is estimated that in the near future they could migrate in large numbers and coexist in these lands, accepting certain custodial conditions. Perhaps this happens right now. The Land of the Clones, Chapter 16. This is indeed a very strange earth. It was created as a totally experimental first Mars Earth, although it was not used for a long time until they transferred the idea of Mars Earth. The first to penetrate this circle environment were the Anunnaki, finding only life in a very early stage of development. It was immediately used to transport some of the then dominant races to create experimental site for conflict resolution and inter-race development. But this did not prosper and it was almost destroyed. Then it was used as cloning lands to save lives of important leaders of different races. For that reason it has that characteristic name. There was an escape of beings that were used for cloning that had not been chased in order not to generate great commotion in the different worlds. This also happened with human beings who were used for cloning, who escaped from there. These beings were robotic and lacked any feeling or empathy. No doubt all of this was another aberration of the parasites. This experimental land today is completely abandoned. There are one of many forgotten lands that someday may someone can reuse that maybe someone can reuse. The Palladians also have these lands in view to make a massive relocation, but the truth is that it is not known what can be found there, since the large laboratories were abandoned overnight. Chapter 17, The Reptilians These beings are mis often mistaken for the Anunnaki, or other beings, but the reality is that they live far away from the known lands. Although they have visited them on several occasions and have made direct contact with leaders, they are beings who prefer to live far away from other worlds. Their homes are generally built underground, and these advanced reptiles have shown great hostility to humans on several occasions they have encountered them. Generally, if they visited other worlds, they do so to implant subway, base, subway bases that could be used in the future since they monitor everything from their, within their advanced technology. Although they have a whole circle environment for themselves, the Lacerda lands, most of them prefer to live in the island near, the world, near that world. There they have large sub-cities, and although they live in independent lands, they seem to prefer it that way. They have had in the past great wars against the Anunnaki and are considered and are considered of great advancement and development of weapons for destruction. These beings have earned their due respect from the great colonizers, have never been used as beings for inferior task, nor have they been able to bend them in any way. It is very possible that if they had to choose a side, they would go in favor of the custodians in a possible future war against humanity. Chapter 18, The Celestial Lands and Other Extraterrestrial Worlds There are so many other worlds that are being left out of this book, and that soon will also be detailed about them. There are so many extraterrestrial races that struggle to survive in a system that seems to leave mere luck of fate of each one, those who survive and those who die. It should also be noted that there are many others, although to a lesser extent, where peace and, developing, where peace and development reigns. Perhaps because the parasitic races did not see or find anything interesting. Perhaps they monitored them from afar or simply their development was subsequent to the visits in their lands and go unnoticed. Other lands, as we have seen, did not even manage to develop completely when the parasites entered their worlds and emptied their lands along with their dreams, besides staining their history completely with blood, staining their history with completely with blood, manipulated and changed their future forever. The human being was broken and still could not, could not twist the destiny from which he was created. 
His kingdom was taken a long time ago, and it does not seem that they will leave the throne soon. Perhaps it is time to reveal themselves to the deposit king. Oh, despot. To the despot king. Hmm. It is true that at least three colonizing races weigh on us. And although we are all still standing, we are being emptied spiritually every day. The death of the human being will not be the physical, but it will be when we reach the point that there is no being in the known lands who knows that inside is his spiritual potential enough to change everything around. We must also learn from many other races that manage to overcome. We must follow some of their techniques to overcome the oppressive and manipulative powers in which we live here. Many of these races are willing to help in the path towards the awakening and human freedom. <clears throat> it should not be forgotten that the celestial lands, the mysterious and hidden lands where the parasit parasites could never enter, and that they have tried with all their technology together, continue to keep our secret. The one that only we humans carry, the source of life. Maybe we are the link to the other lands behind the great dome. The fear of the colonizers is real because they cannot manipulate our essence. They only manipulate our physical environment. Nothing can harm our inner self. It's time to wake up. Part two, the interview with, the no with Helen, the known lands and the last reset. Chapter 19, The Navigator's Daughter Born in the Ancestral Republic Why the official versions do not inform us about these worlds and what the reasons for their visit to our lands. Those questions are somewhat complex to answer quickly, but I will try. There are many continents behind what you know as poles. I would call them barriers or walls. They can be of ice, as in the Antarctic, and in several other parts, as well as mountains. Although there are several types of, bar of these barriers, both in your known world and outside. I have visited your lands many times as I considered myself part of here. But the ancestors have even visited other worlds repeatedly. And thousands of other races have also visited us both in, friend, in a friendly way and in the most cruel way. We could say that I am also part of here since my ancestors were born in these same lands and lived here until their final day. Since I was a child, I was motivated by the idea of being able to return and step on the soil of my mother and grandparents. They gave up their lives for the freedom of our entire race. My father is William Morris, and I must tell you that he was born in these lands like you, and had the fortune of being able to cross those imposed artificial ice walls created by the same parasites that control them today and manage to find our lands. I mean, the Ancestral Republic, or whatever you want to call it. There he met my mother and formed a great family. I had the best memories of my dear father that fortunately many are knowing little by little and soon a large part will know more about the lands where I was born. Chapter 20 William Morris, the man who tried to change the course of humanity. My father with 34 years of great experience in the Continental Navy met a person called Butler who was infiltrated in the lands in these lands and who had not also been born in mine, for reasons that we cannot say, but with a team formed by several members exper experienced in war and all above their experiences in maritime navigation, and despite the, ten, the thousands of compli complications and threats they received, they were able to enter the, pol the polar zone and cross those walls and then find our lands. It was easier for my father as he was obviously led by an experienced captain who knew the way very well. 
It was not all random as it seems as the first in the story and the first of the book, the navigator who crossed the ice walls. The reality is that Butler was an experienced person in the subject of navigation as he led the Naval Council in my homelands. He has visited these lands many times, more than the world imagines. He is one of those who had done and contributed the most to allow us to infiltrate here and put into action the plan that had been devised together with my father. As I said before, they have fought together in many of us who continued fighting for these lands which we keep in our hearts and which are as much our lands as theirs. Although I do not feel at ease here for obvious reasons about the damned race that is in power and that manipulates to prevent its development freely. These lands should belong to the human being. I mean the real human being. Not that false dome that only nods its head to what it's imposed from above. It must be ours because that is how it was dictated from the celestial lands to Hyperborea. The human being should not seek to escape here, but to subdue the colonizer and expel it. I understand what I am expressing. I am. Whoa. Uh, where was it? I understand what I am expressing it is certainly very complex to carry out today. That is why an alternative plan was sought, which is to get humanity out of here before the next reset. Chapter 21, The Near Lands. Our lands have the same, our lands have a name different for everything that has been named in stories, and surely much of the continents abroad as well. Although many keep the spirit of the great stories and battles that may never happen, I will not annihilate his dream or confuse it with names. Besides, I prefer my lands remain for the moment with the name that some know it, the Ancestral Republic. It's fine as it represents what we are, the surviving human ancestors prior to the last reset. We are your ancestors, although the lands were different before the walls of ice. Our parents and grandparents were born, fought, and some ideas here. You cannot imagine how many stories are told in my lands about the great heroes that were forged here, just as heroes were born in my lands and have done great deeds in those regions. How is it that you speak English? What is the language used in your lands? In my lands, a different language is spoken, native, especially in the main city, but we speak several languages of your land. Our parents escaped from these lands to start again in the outer lands. They escaped from all the corners of the world that you, that you know. Then, in the other lands, different communities were created, but at the beginning, when this happened, each community was divided precisely by their culture. They began to create their own language and their own culture to generate links, and that they were are no divisions between the ancestral humans. Then, as time went by, many already used our native language and even forgot the language of their father and grandfather. This happens more, as I said, frequently in the big cities. We try not to lose the connection with the past. Why did your parents escape, or rather, from what or from whom were they escaping? They escaped from the worst war that has ever happened here, and they did it because there was no other alternative. Escape or die, for all was lost. Forgive me for my emotional when I talk about this subject. My grandfather died in this battle, and so many millions of others did too. My mother escaped being very small in my grandmother's arms. The giants saved many people. For that, we are eternally grateful. Chapter 22 The Giants of the Great Tartary Who Wanted to Liberate Humanity The giant race joined the human race in a previous reset. They came from outside to free us from the vile custodial oppression. 
They believe it was the right time to unite and wait until some of the custodial matters return, masters returned. The great Tartary, the one that who erased from who was erased from the maps in history, was the perfect union of giants and humans. That is why the past of the giants or the giant humans was hidden forever, or simply their history was manipulated with the tales full of lies mixed with mythology and in many ways they were sentenced as enemies of the gods. The truth is simple. You will see it with your own eyes in the future. The only enemy of the gods and of breaking the free development of other races. Of uprooting and destroying the spiritual development not only here in the known lands but in many other lands are without doubt the colonizers themselves. The enemy race that destroyed the dreams of the past and will destroy those of your future if you let them. The giants only show their greatness by staying hidden so as not to generate more harm to the current human being. Since in the past everything has gone wrong for that you are paying a very high price. These lands that are only these lands are the only ones you know for now. Having their ocean stained with ancestral blood, our blood, that tried to change everything, that were very close to achieve freedom forever. Chapter 23 Humans, Giants, and the Custodians The Great War of the Last Reset. The Great War was started so fast that there was not even time to understand what was happening. The custodians attack the big cities as they always do. They go directly to the central power to weaken everything from its core. The giants warned in their visit to the humans that the custodians had the plan to contaminate the air that was breathed here in the world surrounding. It was already known about other continents beyond the domes, but not in the great detail. Neither was it certainly known about the custodial greed and hostility. All of this knowledge that we acquired with time and the help of the giants was largely drawn from the information the custodians had prior to the Great War. Another inferior race was in control of these lands, and this was used to develop all the potential we could reach in the shortest possible time. Incredibly organized plans were carried out Everything worked like great clockwork. The, great, the, advanced, the advance of the great Tartary was not done overnight, but neither was it in long in terms of time in these beautiful but terrible, terrible lands. The walls did not exist back then. The continents were different. Although they did not change by much, they manipulated their lands, their climate, their environment totally in the new beginning. They were never going to admit that they came close to losing their best colony, let alone in the hands of the giant barbarians, as they call them, and the humans they really detested. Sketch range. Chapter 4, 24, The Destruction of the Great Cities, The Fall of an Empire The Great Cities were invaded by Black Smoke. The giants brought technology and taught the humans in Tartary. The level of technology that was used at the time had never reached the hands of humans. It was a difficult process, process, but they were achieving really great things. Just the Great War came by surprise. Although they expected it, they did not think it would come so fast. Then came the Great Flood and different attacks. There came a time when we all knew all was lost. The custodians were weakened, and those in power, the greys, who were their lackeys, could not cope with the power of the Anakam, the giants who helped humans with their technology. There are several races of giants, and not all of them joined in this war. In fact, many of them split later because they did not agree to help. They saw it as certain defeat. At the time, the hope of being able to defeat them was latent, and that filled the spirits of any person who lived on the soil. The feeling that generates to finally be free is priceless, and sometimes 
the dimension of what is taking place is not taken into account. That war was the cruelest that had happened here. It also brought with it great retaliation in the reset and a different beginning. What's being, what is being carried out at this moment? The system that oppresses you and turns you into a robot with mere biological functions, the spiritual emptying, how your mind is controlled, which does not stop for a second to give you messages and messages so that you cannot enjoy the present. All this is a product of the custodial fear of losing your best colony. Unfortunately, the ancestors carry that, and the giants too. For that and for many other reasons, different plans are being carried out to free you and to end once and for all the macabre system under which you live. Many will ask, how is it that we can give all this viable and at the same time dangerous information if it falls into the wrong hands? Your answer is that we can give this kind of information because the majority simply will not believe it. And what we say here today will be forgotten by the majority tomorrow. It is like when someone has some kind of different experience with whatever race, for example, the story about my father in the lands I was born. But it seems different. If the government of this world would all the mass broadcasting apparatus tell you a lie, for example, that the sky you see every day is pink, then many will come out and repeat it even fight to death with anyone who says the sky does not have that color. Even more, <coughs> if important scientists who have been graduated from distinguished universities come out to say that anyone who argues that the sky is pink will be labeled as ignorant forever and possibly affect him all his life, then you already have two things against you. The immense power of the word of the great media that are controlled and that entered every home around the world. And also you have the word of the confidence in quotation marks of the great scientists of the best universities will give you the necessary strength to submerge the majority to a lie will be taken as an absolute truth. Soon nobody will even discuss about the subject for fear of being cataloged as ignorant. Some will not even want to look at the sky for fear of their own mind will tell them that it does not have the color that they say. A few others will fight against this lie without caring what they, without caring what they are told or what they will be ostracized for many places, from many places, or that they will not even be allowed to talk about the subject with a simple censorship. This is nothing new to you. Look around you right now. This is what is happening. If you do not do or say what they impose or simply what the media reports or what is distinguished exposed, then you will be labeled as someone who is on the opposite side of progress, advancement, or development of humanity with many quotation marks. Possibly you will be ridiculed, attacked, sidelined, branded as a traitor, or many other things, this is certainly unfair. The shadow controlling parasites who want total human degradation in conjunction with spiritual hollowing out can label another with their great means or influence and cosion, cosier, cor, whoa. No, co, I, um, um, C O E R C I O N, and thereby destroy them completely. This is why we keep coming back to these lands and will continue to be here to fight against the dangerous con conditioning they exert. Chapter 25, The Last Reset in the Known Lands. The previous reset has been the cruelest of all because they were close, close to losing control. It could not have been otherwise. It is even said that there were periods where humans and giants were controlling the situation. But once the fourth great centers fell, the millions of deaths left by their the millions of deaths left by the war, it was difficult to recover. We all knew at one point that we had been defeated. My mother has told me so many times the story in which turns was told by her mother. I already repeat it by heart. She was also only a newborn. 
Do you understand? They lived in a prosperous world and suddenly their dreams were trampled. Many found loved ones who had died next door. Their houses were on fire or had disappeared. They used technology that you would not understand. They could even petrify beings. They have already done it in the past and they have to see themselves in a really desperate situation. When all was lost and the great flood began, as it is known here, the mud flood, in reality this happened in different forms, but it dragged everything in its path. It was something of colossal dimensions. Many of the humans that grew up after the last reset used vestiges of the monuments or buildings. Even some had withstood the war and the flood quite well. They were resistant to ancestral technology, and they were prepared for everything. That is why you will notice that some images of the past do not match the reality that people lived. The difference in technology and architecture, they mixed the history in such a way that it is difficult for you to understand it completely, but at least you will have an idea of how the whole process was taking place. The resets, with some differences that existed, at least the ones I know of, are mostly always carried out in the same way. They put a limit of years for the race they are controlling to develop and reach a point of its knowledge and technology. They will always try to manipulate reality to reach the point as slow as possible. They take it really as a game. Basically, they will try to pause your spiritual growth and truth about your origins and make your world environment where you are. Clearly, they will make they will never make themselves known, nor will you have any kind of contact with them. But you will be able to find them in history in several possible ways and forms. When a reset takes place, it's called natural, considering that the previous, previously established limit of years was reached. They will make everyone over seven months of age die. This can also be decided in advance in advance or it will simply be thought of at the moment in meetings of the parasite dome the flood of my parents grandparents and all generations suffered was the same that would have happened in the case we had reached the limit of the years developed only that they initiate they initiated this in an urgent way because of the war had been unleashed the last reset in these lands did not reach the time limit that they had established for our development, but we were not far away either. If it was considered that when the giants visited and joined us in these lands, they started to educate us about the lands and the life behind the world environment, we started to learn too many things that they considered dangerous. No, not to make this answer so long, your babies of seven months or less that will be left alive, not all, will decide depending on many factors. Those above that age will be killed or died in a catastrophic or different kinds of this world environment. It's just manipulated its entirety by them. Imagine you live inside a greenhouse. You can understand it that way. You can make it bloom or poison it from one day to the next, or even slowly. Chapter 26, The Continuing Journey of William Morris My father returned to these lands, to the lands where he was born. He longed day after day, planning over and over again how he could return to help those he considered he had left behind his brothers, as referring to them. Knowing this great and painful truth was killing him every day. Imagine knowing that your brothers were dying in there in a veritable hell of wars, manipulation, and pestilence, and that nothing you could do on the other side, where your life was also in danger, but by then the keepers had begun to attack the lands beyond, which until that time had been kept silent. Not only that, but the custodians had encountered a great city of giants and giant humans who were not only traitors to them and therefore deserving the worst punishment. 
By all accounts, the Anunnaki did not decide to take part in these attacks, and the custodians were quickly expelled from my lands. The technology by then quite advanced thanks again to the help of the Anunnakum. This surprised the custodians who returned to the known lands with the fear of the possibility of losing them. They then tried to reinforce the walls with all the technology and military possible. At time, the ridiculous treaties and military bases all over the area was coming to prevent any human being from being able to reach this truth. Now was enough to prevent our ships from even getting through their bases. Now was that enough to even pre sorry it was a question. Now was that enough to prevent our ships from getting through their bases? Question mark. Chapter twenty seven The Infiltrators Double So Do Their Problems When they least expect it, the custodians had their most precious colony around 14,000 infiltrated ancestors. This network was created was part of the Morris Butler plan. Together with giant leaders and several races that also participated and still participate in silence for humanity's liberation. We knew the danger of infiltrating these lands as the custodians could never know that this amount was infiltrated helping and informing many humans about the other worlds, the spiritual potential, and the true human history. This could cause an immediate reset. Everything was delicate, and we could not, be, could not be noticed in a treacherous way. At the beginning, it was not a big problem to overcome the barriers, the military bases, and custodial technology with radars that even caused earthquakes and a myriad of obstacles that we knew how to overcome, but not everything was happiness, and we knew that sooner or later it could happen. An alarm went off, earthquake near what you knew as Antarctic Peninsula or what we knew as the false art Antarctica. A group of people traveling from the ancestral republic encountered a military base patrolling the area in an icebreaker. Our people sank the ship when they tried to escape, and this ir irremediably echoed in the great spheres. They began to chase everyone in every corner you can imagine. With great lies and excuses, they went into homes in many countries where they feared we were hiding for tens, for ten years or more. They searched for every clue and began to use technology to control the movements of the new humanity. Although they already had the, had this type of technology, they completely reinforced it after the Peninsula Incident. All, all this complicated the plan, and it was a great complete setback since we had people infiltrated in the high spheres, political lodges, organizations, companies, universities, etc. This was a bit of an ice water bucket since we had been encountering with our technology any custodial detection and a great advance was being made to be able to finally carry out in a timely manner the transfer of many people who were beginning to awaken. Many of the 14,000 had to return. The fear was already a reality, and some ancestors died in the worst possible way as they were sentenced as traitors. I will not detail the many tortures they suffered. Captain Butler returned to our land in solitude. I will never forget that day. My eyes filled with tears because it was the day I would remember I would never embrace my father again. It was a day I, I knew I would never embrace my father again. Chapter 28, The Death of William Morse Butler approached my mother and me, crestfallen, and his eyes in blood. He was also wounded in, my ar in an arm and a leg. Those 10 or 15 meters were almost were the most eternal of my life. When he was finally close enough, close to us, he looked up and he could not hold back his tears. My father had died in the known lands and, the, and at the hands of the custodian military technology near the Antarctic zone. The custodians had delivered two commandos, the military leaders of certain countries, advanced technologies, and they did not even know how to use. 
This was extremely dangerous for all life within the walled lands. In fact, the custodians knew very well that this was a big mistake and put at risk their own colony. I think that although they were experienced in war, they did not handle well that a race could overcome them or the danger that entailed losing those lands. They mistakenly decided to give technology unknown to the new humanity, only to help them in quantity against the ancestors who were returning to their lands. Many humans were also doing so with them. The humans were also giving knowledge of weather modification and environmental manipulation. The custodians really went into despair. The ship, Iron Blue, where my father was traveling along with some ancestors and the humans of the new reset disintegrated in mid-air while crossing the Antarctic skies. A large invisible barrier was created by the custodians just before the dome. Of course, this was not known at the time to many ships were destroyed. To put it simply, they blocked the part of the dome that we had opened by air. Butler was returning with William in another ship in told in detail about the death of my father my father butler managed to survive by a miracle it was undoubtedly the worst moment of my life and i really felt a lot of frustration and helplessness towards these lands at that moment i lost track of custodians and new humanity i only thought about it if it was really worth my father dying for a cause that seemed lost from the beginning with time, I understood, and now I understand. I feel it in my heart. I also feel part of these lands, and I know that my father wanted so much as I do now, that humanity is freed forever. This technology that the custodians gave to some leaders of the new humanity also brought several inconveniences with the known lands between countries that used part of this technology to threaten and even attack each other. The use also to make they use no, the use also to make ships, planes, and all kinds of transportations disappear, people disappearing, disintegrating to them, although. All this added to the knowledge given on the manipulation of the climate and the environment was, in short, a chaotic era that continues today. It has been feared since then that humanity would be destroyed in absurd wars with the use of biological weapons or that the custodians would decide to reset for fear that they would be exterminated or even that humans would use this technology to attack them. Obviously, the third option was the one that furthest that was the furthest from happening. Chapter 29, Turning the Human Farm into an Eternal Freedom I understand that you may be wondering, so where did the whole plan go? And it is a question I want to answer before I finish. Before I finish. Changes are going to happen. The plan was never abandoned. And in fact, after my father's death... It impacted the Republic more as William was well loved along with Butler and they represented the faces the face of freedom and the direct link to the known lands. The fight against the custodians never ceased and will remain steadfast. Against their oppression, manipulation and control of these lands, as well as other late races, unfortunately we cannot move to the next phase yet, because this takes time. The new humanity has a long way to go in its spiritual path. First, it must free itself from its own mind, which controls it and does not leave it even a second to breathe. To be able to silence those inner voices that are nothing more than a custodial control that they implanted since the beginning of the last cycle. The thousands of thoughts that come into your mind controls you and many times break your dreams. Most of them are simply negative thoughts. The competition you are subject to and the division between you for almost every cause that takes place here are really exhausting and can lead you to the easy path of surrender. 
this energy drain and sense of constant struggle to any race other than oh, blah, 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 blah. this energy drain and sense of constant struggle to any race on any world would have wiped you out long ago and you are still standing it only remains for the majority to know where the real enemy is their macabre psycho psychological games that generate division among you and to break this control and conditioning. The new humanity has an admirable resistance to adversity and infinite potential for spiritual growth, which is sometime which is something we must exploit and can be taught from an early age. They will try instead they will instead try to manipulate the children with weapons and distractions, bombard their minds and continue to try to create robots to follow their dogmas and patterns without question. They will use the usual. The big media, the men and women recognized by degrees that are only given in the corrupt universities, as they call it, distinguished or outstanding, of which very few have access. They will use they will also use the manipulated part of science, and anyone who gets in their way will Try to, they will try to ridicule them first and then attack them in every possible way. I do not mean leave studies or universities, but on the contrary, maybe one of the ways would be to enter there and be the best in each field and be able to modify from within everything that is corrupt or manipulated by them. Anyway, we have a totally different system than the current one in these lands. Within our plan is also to be able to enhance the greatness of real scientific advancement. Unfortunately, the ancestral and giant human advancement was destroyed or simply hidden from the new humanity. We will continue with the struggle to make this humanity understand that if they unite in true love, nothing would stop them. That their brothers are out there and also in here waiting for the right moment that we have never forgotten them. Many lost their lives trying to save them, and it will continue to be so. The ancestral technology will continue looking for the way to end this control. There are many other races that overcame the custodians and were able to free themselves. This is possible, but the human being will not be left easily because he has inside what no other race has. We are the source of life, the possible reason for this great dome and surely the direct connection to other worlds beyond. We are different, and with a different potential that few would imagine with all the conditioning received in a life in these lands, we are still in these lands and will continue standing here, fighting together with you. Those who woke up from this bad dream called the human farm and want to turn it into eternal freedom. That's all.